Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. We're going to be talking about macrostates, microstates, and the second law of thermodynamics. What we're really getting at is why is the second law of thermodynamics true? The second law of thermodynamics, you may remember, tells us that entropy increases. Why is that? That's what we're going to be able to answer by the end of this video. Remember that our systems progress towards higher entropy. So we have here the system where there are 12 gas molecules across two chambers. And what we're going to think about throughout this video is why is it that the system over time progresses towards higher entropy where there's more gas molecules over on the right. And ultimately what we're going to do is restate the second law of thermodynamics in a way that explains it in terms of just plain old statistics. So here's the second law of thermodynamics. It tells us systems progress towards higher entropy. But why is that true? It turns out that for lots of the laws in science, it just is true. And there's not a deeper explanation than that's what we've observed, and it's true. So for example, why does mass attract other mass? Why do electrons and protons attract each other? Why do electrons and electrons repel each other? Ultimately, the explanation is that's just the way the universe works, and we can make another universe where that's not true. However, the second law of thermodynamics turns out to be grounded in just basic statistics. So it looks like even if you were to make another universe, the second law of thermodynamics would still apply. But maybe, maybe the law of gravitation wouldn't be there at all. So the second law of thermodynamics is very unique. And so the first parts of this video is going to be going through some math that will seem kind of disconnected. But by the end, you'll come back with a much deeper understanding of what the second law of thermodynamics is. Maybe you care about that or maybe you don't. I don't know. I think it's like the coolest thing ever. But then again, I am a nerd with my own chemistry channel. Okay. So to begin thinking about this process, we're going to ask how many different ways could we have an 11-1 split in our gas chambers? That means 11 over here and one over there. All right. So uh, that 11-1 split could happen a number of different ways. For example, maybe we have molecules 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12 over on the left and molecule 9 over on the right. Well, that's one way I could have that set up. Or I could switch out the 9 for the 2, or switch out the 2 for the 7. And how many different possible ways are there? 12, because I could have any number, 1 through 12, there on the right side. So 12 combinations. Turns out that this 11-1 split is what's called a macro state. It's an arrangement for our system where I can tell the difference, so it's distinguishable. So we can tell the difference between different macrostates. However, microstates are these different combinations. So each one of those combinations is called a microstate. Microstates, I can't distinguish them. So I can't tell the difference. So consider this. You walk into the lab and you look at a chamber. You could count how many gas molecules were on the left and right side. Maybe there's 11 and 1. That's one macrostate. Maybe there's 7 and 5. That's a different macrostate. However, if you walk in and the split is 11 and 1, you have no idea, and it doesn't even really make sense to ask the question, is molecule 9 or 7 over there? There's just no difference between those arrangements. However, we do know if we count the molecules, we can figure out how many different ways they can show this arrangement. That's the number of combinations, the number of microstates. So the number of combinations is the microstate, and the big, big situation is the macro state. Okay, so that's for 11, 1. What about if we have 10 and 2? Well, that gets really complicated to count. In fact, I'll go ahead and tell you there's 66 different combinations, but counting those out is a real pain in the butt. So we have an equation to help us. This equation tells us that the number of microstates over here, W, is equal to the total number of particles times this little exclamation mark, which is called a factorial sign. Then we divide that by Na, which is the particles on the left, and Nb, which is the particles on the right. So the only thing I want to explain here now is what does the factorial sign mean? Well, what the factorial sign means is you take the number and you multiply it by 1 minus that number, then 2 minus that number, then 3 minus that number. Sounds kind of complicated, but it works out to be pretty straightforward. For example, 6 factorial, we take 6, we multiply by 1 minus that number, which is 5, then by 2 minus that number, which is 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. So 12 factorial would be equal to 12 times 11 times 10 
all the way down. And this is a very common and useful function in statistics. Most of your calculators should have a factorial symbol, or you can actually go and use the Google calculator, which does have that factorial symbol there, and that makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so let's actually calculate now those combinations. Remember that n is the total number of particles. How many total do I have? 12. And a is the number on the left, that's 10 factorial. And then b is the number on the right, that's 2 factorial. You go, you plug that into a calculator, you'll get yourself 66 different arrangements. So this is one more macro state, the 10-2 macro state. It has way more micro states, 66 micro states. Okay, let's continue looking at different splits. Here we have the splits we've considered so far at 11 and 10, and there's 12 and 66 of those. We haven't talked about the 12-0 arrangement, but with the 12-0 arrangement, there's only one possible way that could be, because I have no molecules on the right side. What about the 9-3? This is, I promise, the last time we'll calculate this, and then I'll just show you all the answers. So W equals N factorial, which is going to be still 12. Let's write that a little more neatly. I was recently told on one of my videos that my handwriting was terrible, which is 100% true, so I should work on that. All right, so 12 factorial divided by 9 factorial, 3 factorial. When we do all that nonsense, it's going to give us 220. So you can see here that the number of different microstates is dramatically increasing. Okay, what we're going to consider is now all the different splits. And then what we're going to be able to do is think about the probability of each of those occurring and calculate the entropy of each of those occurring. Okay, so here I have some of the macro states listed. I've listed all the way through 6-6. Six, six. There's more than that. Basically, if I were to go all the way down the list, I would see that after 6-6, six, six, I could do a 5-7 split. And after 5-7, I could do a 4-8. I could do a 3-9 and a 2-10 and a 1-11. But those would all look exactly the same as the states I've showed. So I'm showing every single type of macro state and how many micro states there are. Now, how do I get the probability? The probability of finding each one of those uh, different macro states is the number of micro states in that macro state divided by the total micro states overall. So I think with an example, it becomes pretty clear. If I add up all the micro states, so I add up this whole list plus the rest of the macro states that we didn't list there, we would get a total of 4,096 different micro states. Okay? And now what's the probability of each one? Well, the probability of a 12-0 split is 1 divided by 4096. I got the 1 from right there. So pretty unlikely. Only 1 out of 4,000 times if you walk into the lab will you see your 12 gas molecules all on one side. All right? Now the probability of the 11-1 split is 12 over 4096. Then 66 over 4096. Then 220 over 4096. So as you can see, not that hard to calculate. But when I say the word, it sounds kind of confusing, right? So we just divide the microstates on each row by the total. So this last one is the most likely, 924 out of 4096. So most of the time that we walked in and looked at the system, it would be in pretty close to an even split. About a quarter of the time, it would be an exactly even split. And then maybe sometimes it would be in a 7-5 or a 5-7 split. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is look at how you can calculate the entropy. You can calculate the entropy of each one of these states using this equation here, which is the Boltzmann definition of entropy. You plug in the number of microstates to W, and you calculate that out. We'll actually get zero for our first um, uh, macrostate's entropy, because the log of 1 is zero. And then we can go all the way down. 3.4 times 10 to the minus 23rd for this state. 5.8 times 10 to the minus 23rd. 7.4 times 10 to the minus 23rd. Wow, well, that was really ugly. 23rd, 8.6 times 10 to the minus 23rd, 9.2 times 10 to the minus 23rd, and lastly, 9.4 times 10 to the minus 23rd. So you can see that the most likely state is the highest entropy. So why does our system progress towards the higher entropy state? Well, it's simply because it's more probable. The system with the most number of microstates is the system, the state we're most likely to find it in. So, why do things tend towards higher entropy? Higher entropy states have more microstates, making them more probable. Now, keep in mind what this means. This means that if you created a random universe and it had particles in it, that the second law of thermodynamics would apply to those. 
that it would still be more likely if they're sampling these different macro states that they end up in that most likely circumstance with the most micro states and the highest entropy. That means no matter how you make the universe pretty much, you have the second law of thermodynamics, which occurs, frankly, just because it's brute force more likely to have it in a state where there's more combinations. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.